Have you heard of ever getting your head screwed on wrong? Well, I got my toe on wrong. Happily, it is fixable. Here's how to do it if it happens to you. Having gotten the toe on wrong, there is nothing for it but to ravel all the way back to the beginning of the toe, which I've already done, removing my waist yarn. And now I'm picking up stitches onto a steel circular needle. This is going to make rehanging these stitches considerably easier than trying to do it from raw stitches. Just see there one ran. Don't worry about it, just make sure you catch it. So they'll all be caught. They won't run any farther. But I must keep in my mind that not every single one is on the same row right now. This is pretty typical. You can be careful enough for it not to happen. Your first time it's going to happen and my time's working behind the camera it's likely to happen because I don't have the ideal angle for control. Just two more. Ideally you would insert the tip of the needle into the same into each stitch in the same direction. If you miss, the stitch can be flipped over later. Okay, everybody is now salvaged. So now because my issue was that I got confused about aligning the heel and the toe, I'm going to avoid that next trip around by putting in a yarn marker. This will easily come out later. That's showing me where the heel is so that I can sight down it and align the toe. And it'll remind me both the ideal spot to place the stitches on the loom and the point at which the toe short rowing should begin. I got it clocked around. Here's one of my heel start markers. You can fold knitting very easily along one column of stitches. So I'm doing that so as to be able to place a similar marker right at the top of that column. We won't be in the way of knitting and that will help me place my stitches on the loom in the proper order. Here's the sock. Drop it back down into the loom. I want this marker stitch to be on one corner. You can really start your toe and heel at any point on the loom, not at any point on the sock, but at any point on the loom. However, I just find it easier to keep up with if I do it this way. Okay, you can still see my marker, but I've pushed it down so it's out of our way. You can see there's a strand of yarn here that will need to be re-knitted. But this is the stitch that goes on the corner. And that starts everything off. Now, I really would like to start at the tip of the needle, pulling stitches off. So let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's how many stitches are past the marker stitch. Pull the needle back a little bit so I can begin to work on it. Now let me count over from the marked stitch in pegs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is the peg that I want the end stitch to go on yarn marker so I don't get confused again. It can just stay on the peg. Whoops, that's the pin, not the peg. Yeah, that's correct. Now it's just a matter of backing the needle off and hanging stitches on pegs. It's okay to let the corner stitch pop off now and kind of essential to do it because you can't really keep it on and work these on at the same time. 
first stitch goes on the marked peg. Just draw the knitting needle back out of it. Second stitch on the next peg. Third stitch on the next peg. And on around the loom we go. There are a couple of tricks that I should point out before I go off camera to finish. See, I have my um, cable pulled through and I've set it up similar to what you do if knitting, hand knitting with the magic loop method for socks because it makes it much more flexible to go around these corners than a single needle will do. That's one reason for using a circular needle. The truth is that I keep these steel circular needles specifically for this job and for moving stitches on machines. I don't really like knitting with them. I knit with bamboo when using circular needles. But they are super for this. And I'm not saying that steel needles aren't nice, but we all have our personal style. And bamboo suits my hand with knitting better. But you may have steel needles that you love to knit with. That's, you, that's fine. It's just that the slipperiness, which really works well here, does not suit me personally while hand knitting. It goes around like that, and you may have spotted somewhere in here, there's a strand of yarn. That's one of the drop stitches where I actually hung the row below the stitch. So all I have to do is put it back on its peg and knit it over. Now, is this a pain in the neck? Yes, it is. But it is not a nightmare, which it would be if you tried to just hang directly from the unraveled stitches. Now I want to hang some stitches from the other needle point. So I need to back that needle point out. And this is what I'm talking about, about setting up is for the magic loop. You pull the cable out between some sets of stitches, leaving only a few on the straight portion of the needle. That's my working yarn that I'll be re-knitting and I want it on the outside of the work. Withdraw the needle, and now you see it's turning the corner for me because of that loop of cable, and I'll be able to hang without mishap. Every now and then doing this, you find you've hung on the wrong peg and you have to shift things around, but that's still doable. It's a pretty obvious fix. That stitch is twisted, so I'm untwisting it. If I had trouble getting it untwisted now, it would be, a, oops, let's not let that happen. It would be okay, because I am going to make a circuit around the loom before moving on to make sure there are no twisted stitches and they're easily turned at that point. Now, when I dropped all those off at once, it was an accident, and it's from working behind the camera. But should it happen to you, you saw what I did, right? I grabbed them quickly with the fingers of my other hand and rescued them. Everything is hung back on. Now we have a couple of choices and duties. First of all, let's examine and make sure there are no twisted stitches. And actually, it looks like I did quite well, and there aren't any, so I'm going to fake one to show you what you're looking for. If you got one on there wrong, it would look like this. You see, if you look closely, the ones that are not twisted make a complete letter U right around, but they do not make any sort of X in the back. It's very hard to get where you can see it. They also look a little tighter than the others. So if you lift it up, you can see the X. Just unwind that X and place it on smoothly. You've already seen me replace a strand of yarn around the peg like this and re-knit it. And with the few that I've got missing, the top row, that's probably what I really do. 
but in this case I want you to be able to see the options. We can unknit the top row all the way around, which will also serve to double check or to allow us to double check that there are no twisted stitches or split stitches. That one that just came off, I had split it and I had not even known it. So I'm lifting the stitch from the row below and then releasing this row's stitch length of yarn and then I can re-knit the whole thing neatly if I want to. But that will, that's another way of assuring that the stitches are on correctly all the way around. It only takes a minute. And bottom line, a sock takes long enough to knit and enough effort that 10 minutes to rehang and do a good job of this if there's a mistake is in my mind worth it. Since we have a method that doesn't cause us to scream and cry and say words that a lady should never say, trying to do it from raw stitches will do all that, and I've given up on that. So around we go. Before I go, I want to remind you what this is. It's actually a machine knitting latch tool. It's a standard gauge size. They're available from those who sell machine knitting accoutrement. You don't even need to have this to get the latch tool. You can just get one of the needles that is for a standard gauge machine, any brand at all. They are available on eBay and from machine knitting dealers. And a crochet hook will do the job. I find that the latch is a big help when you're trying to work down under in tight spaces here. And that's what I used to make my yarn markers. So I thought you might like to make sure that you knew about that in case you need one.